Volodymyr Zelensky was at Davos, and the New York Times did a write-up here. Zelensky calls for peace, not more weapons in Davos. So Zelensky came and made the world an offer, and uh, we'll see what that offer is in just a moment. With fighting still raging in Ukraine and a front line that has barely shifted in more than a year, the country's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, headed on Tuesday to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, amid a swirl of diplomatic discussions about possible peace talks. Mr. Zelensky, dressed in olive green pants and a black crew neck sweater, was greeted with applause when he walked on stage in a room packed with hundreds of people at the forum, a high-profile gathering of business and financial elites. In other words socialists in his speech (laughs) he promoted a ukrainian peace plan and called for stiffer sanctions on russia but in contrast with his comments to the forum last year mr Zelensky made no direct appeals for weaponry for new offensives on the battlefield we need you in ukraine to build to reconstruct to restore our lives he told the audience of investors each of you can be more successful with Ukraine. I promise you, whole country is 75% off. You can stuff your capitalist pockets with even more filthy lucre. Much better than Gaza. Yeah. Much better <laughs> money to be made in Gaza. And we are white. And we are white. We yes. look like you. <laughs> Mr. Zelensky highlighted his country's plan to end the war, an initiative called the Peace Formula, which has gained the backing of dozens of countries, but those countries do not include Russia, and Moscow has rejected its terms. Russia has signaled through informal envoys that President Vladimir Putin is now open to ceasefire talks, but Ukrainian officials have said that they will reject any temporary truce that comes separate from a broader settlement, lest Russia merely use the pause to regroup and attack again. Um, uh, we, we covered this the other day. They're attacking. Right. They are attacking now. No, but he's saying that they that uh, that uh, Ukraine is not going to um, accept a peace deal that leaves them vulnerable to further attack. No, I, I understand. But it's not like right now they're not attacking. They are attacking like right. they don't need they don't need a pause to attack. They're attacking. Well, look, Ukraine Currently, never had speak. a chance to, to make the kind of deal that they wanted. That wasn't going to happen b- before the war. wasn't going to happen once the war started. Certainly not going to happen now that they essentially lost. Um, right. But we'll get to the, the terms that this guy thinks he's going to get, which is just unbelievable. Russia, Mr. Zelensky said, has become an agent of chaos in world affairs, sowing instability in African nations in Syria and in Ukraine through military interventions that attempts at negotiations have failed to slow. A ceasefire in the long-running war in eastern Ukraine did not stop the full-scale invasion in 2022, he said. I don't believe Putin is capable of changing. Only humans can do that, (laughs) Mr. Zelensky said. Spicy from uh, Volodymyr Zelensky there. Uh, On Monday, Switzerland... big, Big words from an actor. Yeah, exactly. Big words, indeed. Switzerland agreed to push the Ukraine plan a step forward. Switzerland will host a summit of countries backing the peace formula later this year, the country's president, Viola Amherd, said after a meeting with Mr. Uh, Zelensky. Now, here's the peace plan. The plan calls for a full Russian withdrawal from all Ukrainian territory, including Crimea, payment of reparations, and prosecution of war crimes. All of those demands are considered by analysts and even politicians backing the proposal to be unreachable given the current balance of forces on the battlefield. Yeah, no shit. The proposal also includes intermediary steps such as securing Ukrainian nuclear sites, ensuring grain exports, and exchanging prisoners of war. Okay, Crimea, that's all you, uh, that's all you have to say. Okay, He's not listen, giving I you- know you won war. But can you pretend you lost? <laughs> exactly. That's what he's saying. I know you win. Can we make like you lose? Right? Who's the guy on Seinfeld, the guy with the tennis racket who asks Jerry, uh, you know, the, the my girlfriend, she thinks I'm not a man. My wife says I'm not a man. Can you let me beat you at tennis? That's what Zelensky's there for. Right? Like, yeah, you lost. Now you're going to yeah. ask for terms as if you won. Right. Crimea, that's it right there. You 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 could have stopped right there. There is absolutely no way on earth Putin is giving that up. That was one of the original three terms that he laid out before the invasion took place. You had a chance to agree to those, and you could have saved your people half a million lives. 
You could have saved yourself this horrible, tragic explosion of violence. The three terms were neutral Ukraine, independence for those eastern regions, and recognition of Crimea as Russian. So what makes you think Putin's going to give that up to you now after he won the war? Like, just com complete and total insanity. Well, yeah, it's de it's delusional. It's yeah. delusional. Well, th well, this is somebody who was never qualified for his job in the first place that the Western media, as they love to do, pumped up as some kind of uh, ubermensch. Um, it, it, the, the brave and courageous leader of Ukraine, he's a fucking actor who got stuck into a, a position that he was never qualified to hold. Um, and that's why he was so easy for Western powers to manipulate. Exactly. A smart, strong leader would have seen, oh, they're just going to use my country to uh, benefit their arms manufacturers. Fuck Boris Johnson. I need to sit down and come to terms with my actual neighbor, Russia, especially given that the West has a long history of losing interest in countries like mine that they prop up as soon <laughs> right. as they get distracted by some other conflagration or they see a better opportunity or their people start to get tired of it, right. um, which is exactly where he is now. So, yeah, he uh, it, it, on the one hand, he realizes he's fucked and he has to make peace. And on the other hand, um, you know, it's the it's the uh, stages of death, right? Anger, denial, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Uh, he's just not there yet of accepting he lost the war and he's going to have to settle it on Russian terms. Exactly. All he right had to now do he's take... at bargaining. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. All he had to do was take that deal, a neutral Ukraine. Um, that that works out for Ukraine because there was no danger of Putin taking Ukraine. The reason he wanted Ukraine to be neutral is because he didn't want NATO on his border. So if, if Putin swallowed Ukraine, now all of a sudden NATO's on his border. He wanted a right. neutral zone between the right. Russian border and NATO. And right. so the deal was right there for you to sign. And like you said, he is just an idiot who got duped into believing that A, he could win, and that B, the West would have his back in either circumstance. And as you can see now, cut to two years later, they're, you know, recruiting, you know, 55-year-olds for the front lines, throwing them into a meat grinder, um, hundreds of thousands dead, hundreds of thousands injured, a complete nightmare. And now he comes to Davos thinking that he's going to what? Rally the world behind a peace plan that participates in his delusion that what? You won the war? You didn't win right. the war. You're not getting the kind of deal as if you won the right. war. Now you're going to have to yeah. make a much tougher deal than you could have had you avoided this war in the first place, which is what obviously should have been done. Well, he's going to wind up having to make the same deal only with a completely uh, decimated population left yeah. to try to rebuild the country. Please clap. Please clap.